Australia's native wildlife is disappearing at an alarming rate and the feral cat is the chief culprit. But they're now also affecting sheep farmers in Tasmania. The cats are carrying diseases which are being passed on to flocks with disastrous consequences. And as Ginny Stein reports, the federal government has announced a 10-year plan to effectively eradicate feral cats. Northern Tasmania and Bruce Young has company. A trap was set last night and a deadly animal has been caught. This is it. All right. In good condition, no? Yeah. Looks like... Cat. This killer, one of an estimated 20 million currently roaming across Australia, is now on death row. No, I don't want to get bitten or scratched. While this caged feline may look like your average domestic cat, it's certainly not. It's quiet now. It's just the aggression from the cat. Uh, somebody's house cat will just sit in the trap quietly, wants to be let out. These things explode. But it's not just what they eat that worry sheep farmers like Bruce Young. Uh, let, let Bonnie off, Mike, would you please? Bruce Young breeds fat lambs and grows crops such as poppies, potatoes and grass seed in Tasmania's agriculturally rich north. That'll do, Clyde. He welcomed an approach by his local land care group to set traps on his property after noticing more and more feral cats roaming across his paddocks. This cat isn't one that we identify with. We know we've got two different coloured gingers and several different blacks. So we haven't caught the cats that we have seen. Seen, yeah. So these are cats which are there, which we haven't noticed. If you let it out now, what would happen? Uh, it would just run off. Yeah, or it could turn around and go, yeah. Mm. Feral cats are now considered the biggest threat to much of Australia's native wildlife. But it doesn't end just there. Sheep farmers in Tasmania blame feral cats for spreading disease with fatal consequences for livestock. On Bruce Young's farm, he's counting his sheep and his losses. He's raised lambs here for 40 years. At the moment, we're running about 2,300 ewes. Yep. And we'll have about uh, 2,400 lambs this year. Uh, last year from the same ewes, we got about 3,000 lambs. What caused the difference? Well, we had a lot of the ewes abort from about middle pregnancy up till um, our lambing in, um, um, around the 10th of August. Bruce Young did not test his sheep. He considered it too late. But he believes it's the parasite toxoplasmosis, which is spread by cats, that's to blame for Tasmania is ground zero for toxoplasmosis. In the feral cat population, it's, it's 80 or 90 per cent, so, which is among the highest in the world. Why is that? It's partly climate. Um, the toxoplasmosis organism likes cool, moist climates. The abundance of cats can be quite high in farmland, so if there's lots of cycling of the parasite between cat populations and native species and, and introduced rodents as well. Toxoplasmosis not only causes sheep to abort, but can kill and blind many small native animals, such as bandicoots, wallabies, wombats and paddy melons. The way it works is that the parasite reproduces in cats and its eggs then get spread in cat faeces. They can be ingested by herbivores, like bandicoots and, and native mice, but also sheep. And then the parasite gets clever. It can cause changes in behaviour in some infected animals. The toxoplasmosis organism gets into the body and forms cysts, and some of those cysts form in the brain. And in, in rodents, at least, they can change behaviour. Um, they have a specific effect on behaviour, which is to make the mouse um, less frightened of cats. And the reason that, that, that the organism does that to the mouse is that it actually wants the mouse to be eaten by a cat because the parasite then completes its life cycle and, and reproduces again. But it's not just wildlife and sheep that can be infected, so too can humans. It's actually very bad for pregnant women. Pregnant women are advised not to change kitty litter. 
um, because if they get it, it, it can have, I mean, it can, it can damage the pregnancy. There's some evidence, and this is a bit controversial, that it affects behaviour in people. Rod Andrew Arthur is Tasmania's chief veterinary well, officer. It only needs a very small number of infected cats in the population because of the huge home range of cats uh, to keep that level uh, present in our wildlife. Controlling cats, both feral and domestic, appears farmers' only answer. Cats have got to pick it up from wildlife. You can't really stop that, but you can try and take some precautions uh, for it as far as the sheep are concerned. Uh, try and keep your cats out of your grain stores. Um, uh, try and preventing the cats from contaminating you know, your hay, your grain and things that you're going to feed to sheep. And that's the course of action Bruce Young is taking, trapping and exterminating feral cats caught on his farm. This year we think we're back 500 lambs due to toxoplasmosis. And 500 lambs uh, at a, you know, $120 is not difficult to work out. But most of all, it's the uh, devastation to our fauna and our marsupials, uh, ground nesting birds. These are the things that are really under pressure. In the quest to rid their farms of feral cats, farmers in Tasmania have discovered an unexpected ally in Environment Minister Greg Hunt. There are up to 20 million feral cats taking up to four native Australian animals a night. That's over 20 billion Australian native species being destroyed a year. These uh, animals pose a disease threat as well as a predatory threat. And the solution is the same in each part. We simply have to work to thin and then to effectively eradicate the problem of feral cats. Despite budget cuts to land care earlier this year, new money has been promised to help community groups trap and eradicate feral cats. We're looking at uh, an increase from a little above $40 million over four years to $90 million. And what I have done is already spoken to the national head of land care. He has said that his groups want to be part of this. In northern Tasmania, they've already started taking action. I noticed their bandicoots had disappeared from the bottom uh, paddock. And yeah, I've been seeing a lot of feral cats around. Um, there seemed to be an explosion of them, so anecdotally. So we, we purchased half a dozen traps and started mucking about with them and realised there's a hell of a lot of cats out there. Just hold it steady, yeah. just firm. You got him? Yep. But catching cats is not easy. This open-ended trap has been designed to entice what's typically a very wary animal inside. Can't get out, we can have a pretty good look at him there. In the past few weeks, Kevin and Jamie have caught dozens of cats. We leave the traps for two weeks. It's usually from the second night onwards we get them. Well, I reckon we've got a feral here. No We're removing a lot of cats from the environment. Yep. We've actually undertaken a, quite a few community programs and they've been really quite successful. Alistair McNeil, on whose sheep farm these traps are set, is keenly aware of the losses other farmers have suffered. He hopes by taking action now, he will avoid similar losses. We rely on fat lambs. Um, we're uh, presently probably a thousand sheep here at the moment, so um, we need everyone to uh, survive. So it's very important that we do stem them in the bush and um, as we saw today on the uh, trapping, going along very well. Jamie Cooper, who designed this trap, has experience chasing this hard to catch animal across Australia. I've traveled through the Simpson Desert but there's been no water for, for days and feral cats near the campfire that night and you just wonder you know, how they survive in that tough environment. In Tasmania, there is one animal that until recently kept feral cats at bay, the Tasmanian devil. We know from experience and from anecdotal experience where uh, Tasmanian devils will find kittens when the mother dens them and will destroy the kittens. Andrew Kelly says since the devil's decline in the wild, in part caused by communicable facial cancer, feral cat numbers have exploded. There's no positions vacant out there for cats these days. That's, that's the other problem. You know, cats that would wander and roam, 
But once you have more cats in the environment, you know, they are saturating, firstly, the marginal lands, you know, the, the areas where people and farms and the wilderness meet is probably the, the, the front line. But taking lethal action against an animal considered by many to represent their pets is likely to be challenging. Look, I might attract a few um, comments about this, but I think that the cats are so loved by people. The, the moggy lobby, I call it. You know, pe people put cats before wildlife, simply put, in Australia. Breeding programs have fought to save Tasmanian devils. At this century, it's been proved possible. Now there are calls to reintroduce them into controlled areas across Australia. The Victorian government is the first to say it's considering releasing devils into Wilson's Promontory National Park in a bid to restore an ecological balance between feral cats and wildlife. I don't expect the devils would eradicate cats, um, but they might limit, they might keep the lid on them and they might reduce their impact. Um, and the idea of, of introducing devils to parts of mainland Australia sounds outlandish, but it's actually quite sensible because devils used to be widespread on the mainland until fairly recently. While using a native predator to control another sounds good on paper, caution is being urged. Let's stabilise the population on Tasmania, have the scientists research uh, whether it is good for the Tassie devil and good for the broader native Australian population uh, with regards to uh, native birds, native mammals on the mainland. For now, trapping and disposing of feral cats appears the safest way forward.